Ladies and gentlemen, good morning for Saturday morning here at Equestria LA 2015. We're getting ready to go for another day here at EQLA, but this is going to be that day that we just look around and go, what happened? Because today we have a Who's Line panel, before that we have the Lauren Faust panel. After the Who's Line panel, guess what? We're right back at it, but headed to Irwindale Speedway for a demolition derby. I'm so Saber Spark is going to be part of his first ever demolition derby today. He'll be in a Fluttershy car. We will document it. Um, there'll be an even more in-depth look at this whole demolition derby on the low budgets, and that episode will probably come out a little bit after that. So probably a month or two, or three, or four, or five. Probably not six. But maybe so. so everyone's here in anticipation for the Lauren Faust panel. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Big crowd, Jason. It's a big crowd. N.A. Larson's here. That's good. All right, Mitch. So what are you gonna ask her first? Um, I'm gonna ask her. Oh, I got nothing. All right. See you later, Emma. <laughs> With my little there's dozens of people who created and who add to it, writers and artists and designers, voice actors and blah blah blah. And all of us are replaced. Never forget. You're right there. Love it. It had it has its own style, like design style, and tons of art, and the characters are well developed. And um, hmm. when I went back to read through it now for this, um, a note for cosplay. If you have something that's tall. And this is the stat you got me. So and at the end of every Bible you have sample episodes. You had some slice of life episodes and So four of the five slice of life, life sample episodes you had were turned into episodes. And yes. two of the four adventure ones were, which is six out of nine, which is crazy. <laughs> is it's, it? I think it's crazy because the, once the show gets going. So I think I was waiting for some for a special moment and it just um, I don't know, things just got so crazy and insane that like doing special things just kind of Did you have a concept? Fell to the wayside. Um, do you mean like artistically? What were they gonna be? Uh, you know, I was such a nerd for the, the G1 ponies, I was going to make them look like the G1 Sea Pony horses. Like, I was going to try, I, well, my plan was to stay as true to those designs as possible, so, you know, seahorse styles with pony heads. What would their story be, you know? Um, I don't remember. You read the Bible, no? They didn't have it. It wasn't in there. It wasn't in there? It was talking about Equestria and all the different areas. Oh, I think I, I yeah, 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 because I think that was supposed to be like the fourth area, you know, there was Canterlot, the uh, um, Cloudsdale, uh, Ponyville, and then it was going to be like the, the ocean where the sea ponies live was going to be kind of revealed as a, a fourth, a fourth land and a, and a fourth race. Um, so I think, I only have really vague ideas. I think I have this, this uh, basic concept that they meet a sea pony on the beach, you know, and she's saying, our, our kingdom is in trouble, come help us and save us. And, um, you know, because I was working in lots of classic mythology, both from, you know, Greek mythology, European mythology, and even other cultures, I think I was thinking about using the Kraken in that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because now I'm, I've got a, using the Kraken now. So. Right. right. <laughs> Never goes away. Yes, so it's always the Kraken. <laughs> Happening in this episode that was being figured out, like you asked me in the script to call out the main six security marks, what they actually were, and I wrote back and said, I don't know, I don't know what they are. <laughs> so this and I went, oh my god, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is my third episode. And oh, that's right, it wasn't on the air yet. That's it wasn't on the air. I didn't see any animation until after I wrote this episode. Because then there was the season two summit you brought in the pilot. Oh, that's right. And we got to watch it. And that was the moment 
that was a moment where I was like, oh wow, this is something special. Aww. Because you played the, the episode. That... Thank you. As if you needed any more. Because you played, I'm going to interview you while I do this. You played the uh, pilot. That's good. Mm. <laughs> and I remember thinking, this is like melted skills on the screen, and I just want to lick the screen. And so... <laughs> And then you play Winter Wrap Up. The song Winter Wrap Up, and I was just like, "This is this is legit. This is a really good show." Um, so it took a while for me to realize that. <laughs> Did you have any moments where you're like, "Oh wow, this is actually..." Yes. Well, real. you know, I I um I believed in it. I I believed in it from day one, but I was worried about the pace of the schedule, and I was worried about um, being so far away from the rest of my crew. But there was this beautiful moment. And, and you guys, it, it, it was so fast that I was overwhelmed uh, with, with, the, with the workload I had. And there was one day um, where I was going to see the first animation tests, and it was just supposed to be a run cycle of Twilight. And before I opened it, I was really tired that day. I don't remember what was going on. I was really tired, and I, and I went to, uh, before I opened it, I kind of braced myself, and I went, okay. It's really important that this is good, so if it's not, you're going to have to try to dig down deep, <laughs> find the energy uh, to get it right on top of everything else that you have to do, because it's really important. And then I opened the file and I watched it and I went, oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> it was, it was, it was amazing. It was, it was just like... First of all, I, I think I was mostly just relieved, like, oh, I don't have to give any notes. <laughs> um, but then I, I showed it to my husband, Craig, and Craig went, Lauren, this is really, this is going to be something special. Wow. Like, he really said, he, Craig had two big moments. Uh, that was one of them, and, and much earlier, when he had heard uh, the first um, uh, auditions for Rainbow Dash, and he went, that, that's a star. That, that character is going to be a star. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Was, it, was that was that lopsided like the moment where Twilight kind of came to life for you? Uh, you no, no. You know, I, I when I create characters, <coughs> I think that might be why I'm such a hard ass about getting it right. Because when I create characters, they they exist for me. They they are real people. And so even before that. Even before that, like I knew who she was, and and creating her was more about making sure everything reflected what I. Not even what I had in my head, but kind of what I felt in my gut. Right. Um, so, and, and, and I am that way to this day. Like, it's, as I said, I always say it's all about the character. So, like, she was this this girl that I knew, and I, she needed to exist in a certain way. So, every time I saw something that reflected what I felt, those were thrilling moments. Right. Very cool. I'm still gonna read this note. <laughs> yes, no, read the note. I, I, I'm dying. To, I'm dying to hear it. So what I was saying was, this late season one, these things were being figured out as we go. At one point, Rob gave me a note saying, "Lauren, should this be Angel, the rabbit?" And you said, "Yes, this is exactly what Angel would be doing." And I wrote back and said, "Who's Angel?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. And then this. And that was a symptom of the fact that I didn't have all my layers together. Right. You know, so people weren't able to work off of each other, and people weren't familiar with what other people were working on and writing. Yes. You know, so that was on top of my workload. I had to make sure that everybody who was separated from each other still managed to get them on, make sure everybody was on the same page. So. Yeah, we all got each other's scripts, but it takes time to write them. Yeah. Do, by the way, you remember Angel's original name? I don't. Mortimer. Oh, that's right. <laughs> He was a mouse, actually. He started as a mouse in, in, in Tiki Master. He was born with a mouse because I thought it was funny that this tiny oh, little thing was bossing <laughs> Fluttershy around. Um, I don't know why we changed it to a rabbit. I know we, we had to, we couldn't keep the name Mortimer because I think that was a Disney thing. Mortimer somewhere, yeah. It was a legal thing, yeah. Okay, so in Peter Mark Chronicles, Twilight's story. Uh, back in Cantula, it's the summer sun celebration. Celestia's gonna raise the sun. I didn't know what that looked like. So I, I wrote it, and it was this big dramatic. She was straining this whole thing. And you wrote a note saying, I don't think it would be like that, because she does this every day. This is more a ceremonial thing. And your note was, you could make it really girly and Sailor Moon-like, 
where the magic within her makes her long rainbow hair whip around her and craft. <laughs> the issue, I just went, they're a family, and it's three kids and a grandmother, and what happened to the parents? You know, it's, it's, you, you guys guess, but in my mind, it was, they were, they were gone, they had died. Wow. Um, and, uh, but that, for me, that just meant that they were more closely knit family. I mean, you know, that's tragic and everything, but the good thing that comes out of it is, is the bond and the love that they have for each other that came out of that tragedy. Um, for Scootaloo, I never had a specific backstory for her at all. But I actually, my thoughts on Scootaloo was that she's got parents, they're great people, we just don't meet them. <laughs> we hang out with Scootaloo and she's hanging out with her friends. And if there was ever a, a, a reason to introduce her parents and any such sort of story that we were going to tell, then we would. And, and you know, I wanted to keep the flexibility that, you know, if if we came up with a story and Scootaloo's parents needed to be different, or she only needed to have one parent, or she you know, she was a foster care, so if there was another reason, if there was another, if there was a reason to give her parents that are a different way than what I kind of had back in my mind, we could, because I never bothered to define it. It's like Rarity's parents, Rarity and Sweet Belle. I had a plan for them. We just came up in ep we came up with an episode and we went, oh, you know, maybe her parents come by and say this. Okay, well that means we have to invent her parents. You know? <laughs> which is which is fine, especially in the first season, you know, it's like you're building the world and you, as much as you plan the way the world is, you have to be open to flexibility um, as as you write and as things grow to, to change things as, as needed. So like you know, it's like you can define things as much as you can, but if it's not up on the screen, it's all up for debate. Right, right. Um, so yeah, Scootaloo, she's fine. She's a silly bloomer. This is nothing, at least in my book. I don't know what they're doing now, but like for me, she's just, she's just a regular kid. She's just blew behind the other ones. That's, that's it. <laughs> not, really nothing, there's nothing tragic about her at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust him. It's really a beautiful thing with what you just said about Applejack, if that was what you had planned, because in the pilot, there's this gigantic family of millions of ponies who are all related and they have such a great time or whatever. Yeah. But the, the subtext there is that the core of this family happens to Apple Core, get it? Ah. The core of the family is gone. Ah. But the core of the family is gone. The parents who connect Apple Bloom and Applejack and Big mm -hmm. Mac to the rest of them are mm -hmm. gone. But yet they still have this really extended family. Yeah, love. thank you. Should have been in there. Thank you. Also, <laughs> death scene. Yes. <laughs> they were eaten by timberwolves. <laughs> no, they, they weren't. No, they weren't. <laughs> no, I don't know. You know, if you asked me to say what happened to them, I wouldn't have an answer for you. I, I hadn't thought it out that far. I was a scooter. And I know it's important. Murdered Applejack's parents. <laughs> Do I have 15 minutes? Is that right? Oh, Homer. 
because the track changes on the side, and they would talk to each other in these comments. Yeah, yeah, Rob would say, hey, Lauren, do you think this should happen? And I'd go like, no, that's stupid. Um, <laughs> and crap. <laughs> All right, do this crap instead. Um, but yeah, it, because I wanted, the writers to, I wanted the writers to hear Rob's thought as, as well. You know, even, even if I contradicted Rob, or if I supported Rob, or if Rob said something that made me think of something like, oh, yeah, that, and do this too. But I wanted everybody to see what well, I wanted them to see the thought process. See I the thought, conversation. Yeah. And the same with the script. There'll be little, there's little things called script notes that you can open up and you can see the conversation. So Rob at one point, I don't even, I don't know the context of this. It's funnier without the context. <laughs> Rob gave me a note on Rarity and all it said was, can she swing a pickaxe, Lawrence? <laughs> Dead serious. He really was like Lauren. Could rarely wield a pickaxe. Well, that's my Do you have it? You didn't answer. I didn't answer. Yeah. But the pickaxe must have gotten removed. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and then this is a, one of my favorite of yours. Uh, this is the end of Beauty Mark Chronicles when they all look very cheesy. We all saw the same rainbow. We all, you know, Rainbow Dash or Sonic Rainbow made our things appear. <laughs> Lauren says, I said that there's a group hug. And Lauren said the ponies look creepy when they hug. <laughs> oh my god, I did! Wow! Ponies look creepy when they hug, maybe just aggressive and nuzzling. <laughs> Possible. <laughs> I was real, yeah, I was crazy. I was really adamant about that, and I, yeah, I lost. <laughs> so, I don't know why Rarity had an axe, but <laughs> she did. Okay, so, feel free to tell me no on this question. Oh, yeah. It's a bit of an intense question. Oh, boy. But this is, this is a remarkable thing that's happened, that we're sitting here now and doing this, because of the show, which is a remarkable show. And it's a, it's this lightning in a bottle situation. Yeah. So then you leave. Yeah. How do you mentally get geared up for your next thing? Um, you know, it's hard. It's hard. Um, it's it's um, there's there's so much. For a very it was difficult for a very long time because I couldn't help but. Think that things went south for me, uh, that it was my fault, uh, that it wasn't good enough. Um, so that if, that if I was good at what I did and if I was better, then I wouldn't have had to leave. Um, so when I went on to try to do new things, it, uh, suddenly things didn't come as easily to me. I questioned myself more. Um, uh, I still do. Um, Always worried, you know. It's it's such a special thing. It's such an amazingly special thing. There's like, it seems like there's no way it could ever happen again. Uh, so it, it took a long time for me to kind of like find the strength to to move on to, to other things um, and to to try to do new things and create new things. And it's and it's been tough, you know. I was hopeful for Super Best Friends Forever, and that didn't work out. And, I'm hopeful for Medusa, and we'll see uh, how that pans out in the long run. But I, I don't want to be like totally depressing, but I also want to be honest. Yeah. It's it's it 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 it's, it has been hard. I think maybe other people might have bounced back better than I have. Um, but I'm still you know pushing forward and hoping for the future. I, I have this is the thing for me, and it took me a long time to realize this. There's you know we're artists, we're creative people, and we do what we do because you love it, and, and you can't do a good job unless you love it. Um, and unfortunately, that sets you up for heartbreak, um, because this is a business and it needs to make money, and um, you know, there's other people who have their ideas about what's profitable, what isn't, and it's, it's a, especially when you're making stuff for girls, it's just a constant battle. So, I'm, I'm a storyteller, I have a voice. Um, I feel like, I hope, I feel like I have a unique voice, and I'm just trying to find the best outlet to get it out there. 
as uncompromised as possible. So it's still it's still a, uh, a journey for me. I'm still hoping to, to find my place where I get to tell my story in its entirety. So I, I, like I said, I don't want to be depressing. I know it disappoints people to hear you know that I'm not. Deal with it, you guys. <laughs> But, you know, that's, that's, it's, I'm, I'm still struggling, if I'm being perfectly honest, still, still struggling. It's, it's been a hard road. It's, a, it's an incredibly unique set of circumstances that you've gone through. Yes. That most people never go through. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, it's just, I don't know, I, I'm only a freelance writer on the show, and I find it hard, like, to get as excited about my own book yeah. as I am about this show, because <laughs> it was such a fun experience, and I get to connect these people, but it's not my show, like, I didn't create the show like you did, mm -hmm. so I can't even imagine, okay, that's done now, now I'm going to do something else, and then just the emotions, you've got to kind of gear up to do that, Yeah. I can't even imagine it. Yeah, no, and, and you know, it's, it's, I've been, a, you know, Super Best Friends Forever was very healing for me, because it was just these tiny little shorts, and people seemed to love them a lot, so that was nice. Um, Just, just getting the job at Sony, you know, um, when when they came to me to offer me to do so, they said, like, have you ever thought about future films? And I said, like, well, I thought about it a little, but I just never thought that kind of opportunity would ever present itself to someone like me. Um, and part because of being a woman. And uh, so, like, landing that job was actually very, really uh, therapeutic. For me as well. So confidence is a big part of it. It's not necessarily creative. Oh yes, yes. It's it's hard. It's hard to be creative if you're not confident. Right. You know, if you know, there's there is a time on Foster's and then on Pony. I remember that amazingly freeing feeling of feeling like you feeling like you were doing a good job. You know, uh, writing something because you're like, this is the way to do it. I believe in it. You know, and, and that was like something I had when I was younger, and I don't have as much anymore. Right. Um, so I'm just, I'm just trying to get it back. You gotta take that, a drink after you say that. What's that? Take a drink after you say that. Elliot. I don't have any. You see that. Oh no, and, and it's true. It's true. Um, I guess that's part of being, you know, a jaded person in their forties. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but you know, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still working to get it back. I mean, what I did find, which I think is good, is that I know I can't live without it. I, I can't, I can't not be a creative person. You have no choice. Yeah. So I have to, I have to keep fighting. Wait. Okay. So you said something to me when we had dinner. That I guess I'm gonna go ahead and answer. Do it. The truth. Because uh, I think it, 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 what I just said was bad enough. Um, <laughs> You know, I feel like you don't miss me. What? Right? I'm sitting there like, are you crazy? I, 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 I feel like people can't tell the difference between the shows I worked on and the shows I didn't work on. And that all that work really wasn't worth it. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. But she. We are. We love you. Constantly questioning whether or not you're good enough. I was, you said that at dinner, and I was just like, I, I just, I, I didn't believe you that you actually felt that way. But then the more we talked, I was like, she really thinks this. This is crazy. Like, it, you are completely beloved.
Alright. for a train and I was trying to be a good girl and I said like all right well we'll see if we can put a train in the show came up with a concept for a train didn't really want a train but did it anyway being a good girl doing my job um, put it in there and when the character when the design the prop design for the train came through we said um, you know I went well you know I'm sure they'll have, they're designing a toy I'm sure they'll have lots of notes on this so we sent the designs through and they didn't say a word um, so um, they didn't say anything, and then they made a train later. Um, then that was one of them. That was like, we really feel like you need a boy character. And we went, all right, we'll make one. That's great. Um, and they never asked for him to come back. It was or, gone. Yeah, well, you know, it didn't, I don't know. I, I guess maybe it was because I created him half-heartedly and right. didn't really feel like he was necessary, that, you know, it, I wasn't going to bring him back unless they asked for it and then they didn't. So, so he's he's weird. He is weird. He's, he, he doesn't is weird. he doesn't belong. He doesn't he's, need to be in the episode. Yeah. He's very cute. He's very cute. Yeah, but then there's characters, side characters that I thought kind of deserved maybe bigger roles like Twist. That they were like, no Twist, never, never. Like really, like it was really weird. We kept trying to write 
Twist in because we thought she was cute and funny. I thought she was really sweet. And they just, every time we put Twist in, they were like, we don't like Twist, take Twist out. <laughs> Twist. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna wrap it up now. But I want to. I want to give one more funny note from Lauren to close out. Yes, please. Forgive my lang her language. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from Return to Harmony. Um, it's interesting. In the in the uh, outline, you were very concerned that it was reading too serious. So a lot of your notes were find the humor, find the humor, find the humor. Uh, and this is one case. Uh oh. <laughs> we need to, she's talking about Hasbro, we need to let them know what will be funny and cartoony about all our characters turning into bitches. <laughs> Sorry. Well, okay, so again, Thank you very much for everything that you Thank did. you, Vince. This was fun. This was very fun. <laughs>